Halleluja. Shabbat Shalom Mishpaha Yisrael, the family of his election that he has, Sugula, that he has made them special. Beyond the dynamics and the concept of man to describe them in his superlatives, his language or speech. Beyond the concept of the nature of the mind as it tries to function in some of the most finite things of society, he has called a people that were not even yet washed nor cleansed. He has dispersed them into every nation upon the sun and he has made them a royal diadem unto him that the simplicity of their praises and shaha what we call worship jaha is beyond the elements and what we prescribe as worship the people that knows how to call upon his name in great honor above all in great fear he has ordained this hour for his nation that in the midst of all of the calamities they shall be refined and the Torah talks about the brightness of the Mayim or the or the light that shall resonate from them as a nation shall see and they shall know that this is a peculiar people. We don't look that peculiar today. Our attributes are not peculiar. We have learned the way of the world well. We have learned the wickedness of the way of the world. We know how to perform that quite well. We'll become practitioners. I want to speak somewhat differently today. What is our refreshing? We need the well of life. We need to drink. And that's a fact. But I want to first of all the nafal of Yah, uh, the, the refreshing of Yah, his nafash. I want to read quickly from the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah, chapter 28. Chapter 28 of Isaiah. He talks about the pride of Israel, Ephraim. He talks about this, uh, uh, their nature, how they have uh, gone beyond the very aura of our Abba. And he speaks of a time in the ninth verse of Yeshaya 28, what shall be the catalyst or the process to cause Yisrael to have this nafash, this breath of his power breathe upon us, that we may drink from the wells, that we may drink from the fountain that Yaakob dug for Israel. He says this, Yeshaya 28, who shall Almighty Yahweh teach his knowledge, his da'at, the power to discern, to understand all things? To whom shall he make to understand that he has the binah, the perception? Isaiah 28 verse 9. Who shall he make to understand the teaching, the concept, the precepts of Torah? 
of the discipline of those that are his Talmudim, those that walk in the lawfulness of Torah, those that walk in the sadiq or the righteousness of truth, uh, he says, uh, them that are weaned from the milk, am I going uh, to teach them? Shall they be that ministers uh, of the power of doctrine? And they have just been drawn from the shad, the breast, the titty, that they need the sincere milk of the simple elements of Yah. He says, I can't do that because uh, he talks about his pikud. For precept uh, must be upon precept. And precept upon precept. And line upon line, and line upon line, uh, you must retrieve a little from the Barima to acknowledge that which is written in Gileana and that which is written by Yakahan. The concept must be revealed by Obadiah. Line must be upon line. And he says, with a language that not all nations shall understand. He said, for with stammering lips and in the tongue of our forefathers, in the pure tongue of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, he said, will he speak to this people? And when he speaks to them, to whom he has said, this is your Shabbaton. This is the time of your rest. Wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. You may cause those uh, that are amal, uh, that are weary and painful in agony. You may cause them, uh, you may produce in them the breath uh, to rest. Yeah. What, yeah? And this is, uh, and this is uh, the refreshing. This is Yisra'ah. The nafash, what? Precept upon precept, line upon line. The knowledge of Torah, the understanding of Torah, the judgment of Torah that we judge ourselves, uh, that refreshes us with great confidence. Uh, as to know that whom Yah loveth, he corrects, uh, he moves uh, he counsels uh, according to his precepts, according to the lines of the Torah. In any time our mind began to inject any kind of concept. In any time our thoughts has began to process uh, images and thoughts is wicked, Yisrael. It must be produced from the precepts of Torah, his pikud, the knowledge and understanding of his limitations, his ordinance and what he has prescribed. And a baby doesn't know how to build upon that. Those that are still sucking the milk do not know how to build upon one precept or the other precept. That's why you find men with a contorted consortment of scripture that have no relevance to the point that what is trying to prove. It's not a precept that is based upon the precept of what one began. It is a precept moved far from it. You cannot squeeze, oppress a square peg into a round hole. So he doesn't reveal this unto little boys, the Nahan. They must be drawn from the milk Yisraya. Why? Because we must be Nafash. We need the breath of Yah upon us. We need a word from Yah. We need a word from Almighty Yah. We need it from His shot, from His bosom. Yeah. This is our uh, refreshing. And He says unto us, I didn't want to read that last part. He says, In all of that, I don't want to read that. You read it. The last of that verse. You see what it says? I ask you to read it because that's us. And that's the individual state of his nation. We must be refreshed. There is nothing more refreshing than the Mayim. 
even when one is working and laboring in the fields, and when the rain begins to come, uh, as long as it's not thundering or lightning, uh, I have no problem with it because it is a soother. The refreshing of the living well, the fountain, the mayam. The mayam, the fountain that springs forth the life, the strength of the testimony of Yoshua that cause us to rejoice and the joy of Yah overtakes us and it fills us and cause us to be satisfied. It is the source of our satisfaction. Now we can identify or examine our own bosom. What is the source of your satisfaction? What causes you to delight? What is your source of satisfaction? What is the thing that excites your bosom and causes you to come alive? And cause you to be vivid. Your expression to be vivid. What is that? It is the source of satisfaction. And those that drugs cause them to be satisfied. But yet they're not satisfied. In every kind of promiscuous way. And those that with food but they're not satisfied. And those with lies and every kind of, of deceivable concept. But they're not satisfied. When one is satisfied, there is no yearning for nothing else. When one is satisfied, there is no need for nothing else. When one is satisfied, there is no experimenting with anything else. Can I use the analogy, Yisra'ya, I shall. And I don't say this to think that I'm some Sadiq man. I have known this woman for nearly 40 years. And I have been satisfied. I have not had to look beyond the boundaries of the well of life that issues out of her. I have been satisfied. And so my satisfaction has been filled to the fullness. So there was no need of anything else. Didn't need it. Did not want it. Because I was satisfied. Didn't need something to arouse me. No, sir. The fountain. Yah's fountain. His my hand. The fountain. We as a nation must drink. The fountain of Yaakob, the high, the living Mayam, the Mayam high, the living waters. I want to read from Gilyana and see if this prophecy of the words of the mouth of Yakaharan will resonate from the better sheet to that point. It's important that I began here. The book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. He speaks of the blessedness of those that shall suffer in great agony for his name's sake. And even those that suffer death for the name's sake of Almighty Yah. He speaks of a time and a season that we shall, if we are alive, we shall experience it. And he sees this profound presentation from Yah. Gilyana 7, Revelation 7, 17. And for the assurance of the comfort of the heart of the nation, the am, the people that have been set apart to render unto Yah the service uh, of his bay at his house, uh, to render unto him the offerings uh, the zibach, the sacrifices, and all of that which is vital uh, unto him. It has not been reduced to nil or null. It has not been brought down uh, to null. We must offer the same uh, offerings uh, and zibach. 
Bless you for your sure Hamashiach because in that body, in that name, we find all fulfilled in that name. So he speaks of a time that is now. Although he spoke in that now, he speaks of now. He says, for the Lamb of the Sun, the one that God has ordained, which is in the midst of the throne of the Kase, of the throne of Yah, he said, he shall be the one that feeds us. And we are fed by Yahshua. And I will show us what we are fed. That's why we are not refreshed. Because the full time of refreshing, it must come by the precepts. Be it upon the precept and the line upon the line. That's why the enemy take our minds away from Yah. We love everything. We love Walmart. Came out in the dime store more than we love Yah. We love the God of our belly. We love satisfying that. We will go to every link to satisfy it. But we don't love allowing your show to feed us. When your speaks to us, we become very animated. We get upset. There's a distaste in the mouth. He said, the lamb shall feed them. He shall akhala, akhala. He shall give them meat to devour, to eat. I have meat that you know not of. Did he go to the market and buy who has retrieved meat for him? He said, my meat is to do the pleasure, the chafetz, the will of him that sent me. So is that your pleasure to do Yah's will? Is that what caused us to be refreshed daily? Is that what caused life, uh, our nafash, the breath uh, of his uh, assurance to breathe upon us? Uh? We examine ourselves by the precepts of Yah. We can speak hotly about ourselves uh, and say, that's my condition. Uh, woe unto you that deceive, uh, or you allow your own deceitful wicked heart to deceive you. Uh. He said, Yash, your sure shall feed them. Not only shall he feed us, but he shall lead them too. There's only one place the testament of Yahshua leads us. And he shall lead them to Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. He shall feed us, and he shall lead us too. That's why the Ruach HaKodash, it comes to God and to lead us too. And he shall lead them to. And it shall lead them to what? You're sure? It's going to lead us outside of the parameter of Torah. It's going to lead us to the living fountain. The eye and the fountains of Yah. We'll discuss the fountains. But we're talking about the fountain. And he shall lead us to the eye and the living fountain. Fountains of Yah, whereby our mental and spiritual perception is developed by the precept of Yah, the precept on the precept, and the line upon line, here a little and there a little. So I began here in Giliana, and I must go back to the task, the, 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 the precise pattern to understand this profound speech, Israel. We are in the Ach Arith. That shall be a manifestation of a government of power, not only in the natural sense, but above all, uh, in the spiritual realm. Our battle uh, is not one that is natural. Uh, it's beyond that corridor. Yeah. That's why the enemy keep our minds uh, so carnal that we can't trust him. Yeah, we all say we trust him. Yeah. We all say that. We speak boastfully of ourselves uh, and what I did, what I am. You're not worth anything. Uh, unless we are led to the fountains, the living fountains, uh, the living fountains, uh, the living fountains. Uh. And then Nafal, Nafash, Nafal means to fall prostrate. And then Nafash, because the breath. To flow over us. There's nothing like a cool breeze, is it? In the midst of a hot day. I was pondering yesterday, I said, yeah, I don't recall one June 
the beginning of summer, whereby there was no humidity. In my childhood days, I recall that. In my childhood days, I recall that. The coolness of yesterday, the beginning of summer, the humidity was zero. That's unheard of. The weather was like our Ak Davis Azokin in California. We had no humidity. It's just unheard of here in the southern regions of these states that we're in. And what a beautiful accent to that in the garden. You're picking beans and you're sweating. You're enjoying the refreshness of the air or the breath of Yah that blows upon you. I do. I want to live. I want to be around. I want to live, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. I want to live. And the only way we're going to live, we must, Yisra'ya, we must be led. We must be led. And has not this generation been taught? No one leads them. Every man thinks that he is a superior warrior. Has no attributes of a warrior. Every man thinks that he is a wise uh, practitioner of Torah. And you don't see that in his ponim. Move it on. He shall lead us to the iron. He shall lead us to the well of the spring. Uh, whereby our mental, our spiritual resources uh, shall draw from that fountain. Uh, and that we shall be strong. Uh, and we shall do exploits. Uh. We shall exploit the wicked one, the enemy. Uh, that come against the power of our mind, Yisraya. To denounce as we do. The testimony of Yeshua, when we lie, and we cheat, and we steal, and we break the mitzvah of Yah, we do anything against that. When we don't love Yah as we love Him with all of our love, our mind, our substance, and then we show the same kind of platitude to Yisra'ya. You know, it's amazing the hypocrisy of his people that we will think we're doing that. And yet we don't judge ourselves with the severity. That's why we can't cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Because uh, we think that we have, a we have a rose, we have a risen to that occasion. And we're full of our own dung. Full of our own gay luth. That's what we're full of. And it's just a fact. That's why babies cannot teach you this. That's why little boys cannot teach you this. You need those that are drawn from the milk. You need strong men. That's what we need. And your sure shall lead them. We resist that. You notice what we read in Yeshua. Where we hear what Yah speaks unto us. Man, in order for that to resonate any kind of substance to me, yeah? I must see the precepts and the lines that you draw from. You shall. He says, he shall lead us to the living uh, waters of the fountains of the living water. And then he said, the Abba shall wipe away all of the tears from the ayan. From what we see that we have no power to control. Uh, he is greater than the circumstances. He is greater than the elements of our bodies and our minds and circumstances that arise in us. He is greater than that. And that's why we must be led to the fountain. The fountains of the living waters of Yah. That our iron may be strengthened. We may have the resolve and the resources for the battle as warriors. As those that he has called to stand. To fight for his name. That's why I renounce their Christ. I renounce him. I denounce the demonic power of that lie, their Jesus. I damn his name. I damn him into hell, into darkness. Lead me to that living, or the living waters. Your living waters, O Maria, your Mayam, that I shall be satisfied. 
and drink from the wells of the precepts of those men and the bath of Zion who have mastered and Yah has caused his Ruach to master them that they may teach us. Teach the bath of Zion and the sons of Israel that we may be taught as a nation, as a people, as a whole. That's what we need. And there must be the strength of physicality associated with those men. That's what an ish is. I can't stop saying that. Well, man, you have no precept that gives validity to that. Well, let me give you a reference of that assurance, what I just read in Gilyana. And a great blessing or the Berakaya bestowed upon every tribe of Yisraya, all of them. It says in the book of Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter 33 and verse 26. Dibarim, Deuteronomy 33, 26. First of all, there is not. There is law. There is no existence, no comparison. There is none like to the Almighty uh, of Yesh, Yeshurum. That's a powerful expression there. Especially Yeshurun, what it implies and what it means to the house of Yisraya. It is the power of the Yesha, of the uprightness of a nation, of his people, that are represented in their character, their characteristics. And it is a name that Yah gave unto his nation to describe, to prescribe, to indicate the beauty of their character. It is the most pristine character. Yeshurum. Yeshurum. Although he calls us Yisraya, we have prevailed. But it's almost in this regard, a husband giving the wife a name that caused them to serenade each other. And the wife calls the husband by a name that cause or create an environment uh, of great spontaneity. And so they have little names uh, that they call each other. And they identify each other by those names. So, so he calls us Yeshurum. Yeshurum. The expression of his Sadiq, his beauty, his character. What is beautiful to him. Who is like him. There is no one that Rahab that rides. He is the one that dispatch his administration. He rides upon the heavens, the Shemaim. For what? For our is a, is a, a special help. We need a special help from Yah. We need a special help from Yah. Oh, we need Yah to succor us all. He rise because he's a special help. That is what is, uh, is. It is a special help. It is beyond our ability to comprehend how he helps us. And I know that those that will not think that this administration of his truth is not help. It is not the is uh, of Yah. It is not to help to procure us uh, and to draw us onto his bosom by... Uh, but I beg your difference, my friend. You're wrong. And his excellence, his great heir of whom he is, and your excellence rides upon the skies. You ride above the great magnitude of the clouds of the heavens. As we were coming back from California, I see myself bouncing down those clouds and just nothing. They're so soft and pillowy that you don't fall. I know the reality, but it's just the beauty of His Excellence. And I see myself bouncing and jumping from that one to that one and springing over that one. 
and how at all I am when I see the excellence of his majesty and his power. That's why he commands us to look up. We're always looking down to the God of our belly. We're not looking up. We're always looking down to our circumstances and our situation. We don't even look up. We don't even know the last time we looked up. We don't know the last time we lift our hands and just began to serenade him. We don't look up. To see the great excellences of Almighty God. His excellence. He says to us in verse 27, He is the eternal Almighty God. And he tells us that he is uh, our refuge. He is our place of dwelling. We must dwell in Torah. We must cause our minds to dwell in Torah. He is our dwelling place or our mechana. He is the place where we take refuge. He is the place, his Torah, where we find the confidence of assurance. He is our refuge and underneath his everlasting arms. Yah says, I don't have to worry. He's going to thrust out our enemies. He shall thrust out the enemy from before you. And shall say, Shomad. I want you to eviscerate, to destroy, to bring down to nothing. Destroy them. Then the assurance of confidence. He says, Yisraya, only then. We began to destroy that which opposed Yah. We began in our own minds, in our own will, our own precepts and concepts. He says, Yisraya shall then. We shall dwell in Betta. We shall dwell in safety. Hear this. We shall have security and confidence of the Torah alone, nothing else. And he says, the fountain, the ayin, the fountain, the maya, the place of great, refreshing. And not only that, whoever one is satisfied, he said, the fountain. Oh, Yaakov, Yeshua HaMashiach shall be upon the land. And he speaks of the corn and the wine, the offering. He speaks of the ayin, of the yayin, the wine which mollify and heals the body. As Shaul said, drink a little wine to Mothias, uh, for your, uh, for, uh, a little wine often for, your, for, 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 your lust, for the stomach or, or the sake of your stomach. Then he shall cause the fountains, uh, the fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine. And also the Shemayim shall drop down, shall cause the dew to fall, shall cause as it was in the day when Yisrael was in the Bimitz bar in the wilderness. And he caused the dew to rain down manna. Manna, what is this? And when Yah speaks to a nation, our minds are not comprehensive of that because we don't understand the precepts. And we say, what is this that you say? Who can do that? Who can fulfill that? Yeshua said, unless you deny all things, I mean, mama, daddy, all things, everything will possess. And lay down everything and pick up the truth and pick up the testimony of Yah and follow me. You cannot be mine. He says, if you will look at the power of this truth, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood and they all pondered that and no man walked with him they all turned we turn when he require of us we must give everything we must eat this truth we must live this truth it must be in us it must be the substance of our lives it must be the fountain where we draw from it must be the power the testimony of Yahshua for he is the living Torah of Almighty Yah and the word was made. It was made flesh. Hallelujah. We shall drink from the fountain of Yaakov. The well, as the Syrophoenician woman said to Yahshua, our forefathers dug this. 
This is our well. He said, you drink from that well, you're going to thirst again. He said, but I have a fountain that you drink from. You will neither thirst, never again. You will not thirst. We must go back to our forefathers and their ways. We must begin to comprehend the precepts and the wisdom that they spoke. And we will see the power that revealed unto us in the Brit Hadassah. And it becomes real unto us. Until we begin to do that, we will, begin to, we will continue to negate what Yah commands us. We will not grow. We will not prosper in the ways of Yah. Our nephesh will not be healthy. Our minds will not be healthy. We'll waste time in folly and in stupidity. Hear what the word says. In verse 29, he says, Esha, happy, the exuding of great happiness, of the blessedness of the riches of Yah. Happy are you, O Yisrael, who is like, who is Kim uh, who is even uh, close to you, who is like to you? What nation of people that have the beauty that you have? We have allowed the world to rob us of that. The world has robbed us and stolen our own God. Who is Kim or who is like unto you? What nation of people uh, is like unto you? Uh, oh, people delivered by Yah. He is the one that delivered his nation. Uh, he is the one that you all shall deliver by Yah. He said, the shield of your help. He is the shield of the Asia of all of Yisra'ya. That shield, we must have faith. We must have emun. We must have the emunah. We must believe. And we are a nation that cannot believe. We believe the lies of the Goim, the Gentiles. We believe the lies of the heathens. We let them tell us. They make us fearful. We don't fear Yah, we fear them. And who is? And who is? A word of your excellence. And your enemies shall be found to be liars. They're going to be found to be kahash. They're going to be the ones that they will be deceived. They will fall into the wickedness of their own uh, creative minds. Your enemies are going to be disappointed. Your enemies are not going to mean one thing to you at all. They will be insignificant. They're going to be found to be liars. And he said, you shall tread upon their high places. You shall tread upon the high places. Why? Because we are drinking. He has led us to the fountain of Yaakov. And the fountain of Yaakov caused the Esha, the blessings, the, 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 the resonation of great happiness. We're not a happy people. It's not in our expression. And let me say this to you men that love to laugh at everything. You always got this giggle about you. You need to stop that damn mess. Yeah, I would say damn there. Yeah. Everything has a little funny connotation. You answer, you got to laugh. Everything has to be a giggle. There's a wickedness there. It's wrong. Yeah, yeah. You must be sober and vigilant. Yeah. The sober man doesn't do that. The sober man facing death there is no... <laughs> you need to stop that, Ark. It's not of your... You have learned that. And that's why you do it. We had a silly man here. The first thing I said to him when he came out, I said, stop your silly laughter. Well, I'm just happy. I said, lies. You are not happy. Yeah. There's a state of your insecurity, your insurance, your unassurance. That's why you do that all the time. Yeah. You find me. <laughs> the unassured. I said, that's right. You've learned that. It's not funny. They laugh about the most serious matters. They got this chuckle. I don't have it. You can say you know everything I know and 
you're like me. I'm not like you. I don't want to act like you. I don't want to do what you do. Well, I'm as wise as you, but I'm not as wise as you, and that's for sure. That's a fact. I don't want to act like you. As a young man, I've always hated that. I hate the laughter because I know it's, it's just folly. And once you find men laughing, you're going to find this spirit that enters in. It's a fact. Your sure didn't laugh. You don't see what the Torah said. He was full of laughter. When he answered them, he laughed. You find that in the book? Well, so then, if your shoe is my head, should I not be precisely like him? If that mind that was in him did not do it, so if I had that mind, then I will not do it. I don't care if the men don't like me. I don't care if the bathrooms I own don't, do not like me. I'm not troubled because men don't like me or women don't like me. I'm not troubled about that. I go on. And that's a fact. We must strengthen one another. And I don't like that from no man. I don't care who it is. And I'll tell them, stop the laughter. Can I move a little farther? Can I? I shall. Hallelujah. I shall, my friend, because I must draw the conclusion from Yokohanan when he said that the Lamb shall lead us to the fountains of the living water. I must understand the concept. He did not say the fountain. He said the fountains, the iron, the mental, the spiritual uh, captivation, the knowledge of Yah. He said the fountains of waters. There's a plural sense in both of those indications uh, what he described. I want to find out what uh, those fountains are. I want to see if the Nabiim or the prophets spoke of those fountains uh, and how they destroyed that uh, and what is the process uh, of getting there. Jeremiah, Jeremiah. I want to show you the greatest sins of his people. There's one thing that we have done. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Yah says, for my, uh, my nation, my people, we have committed to Rah. Jeremiah 2.13. He said we have committed to evils. We have practiced. We have been uh, deliberate in our actions, our activities. We have committed to evils. First of all, uh, he tells us that we have azab. We have forsaken. We have abandoned. We have segregated ourselves from, we have left it behind, we have uh, forsaken. He says me, is that the expression of the rendition and the writing uh, of the Sefer? Uh, he said, you have forsaken me. He says, I am the fountain. I am the makoa. I am the makoa. Of living, uh, he did not say water, he said of the living waters. He said, you have forsaken me, I am the fountain. He says, I am the fountain, I am the mako, I am the source of life. I am where life comes from. I am the nafash of life, I am the breath of life. I am life. He is high in. He is high. He said, we have forsaken. And of course, we will say we have not forsaken. We that are just, we live by imuna. We must live by faith. We must live by faith. We must trust our Abai. He said that we, did he say my people or the Gentiles? He said my people. He did not say the Philistines. He said my people. They are the ones that have practiced the evil. And there are two pronounced evils against them. First of all, they have a zab. We don't go to the well. We don't go to the precepts of Torah. We go to the precepts of our enemies who are liars they, that tell us the kahash. We lie. We speak lies when we know we're speaking lies. We don't know how to be honest with each other. And because of that we fall. We do not succeed in the things of God. We don't grow. We are always disappointed. We are never happy. 
Because of the spirit of Kahash, just like Nahash, spelt the same way, K-H-A-S-H. Just Nahash and Kahash. He said, they have forsaken. We have absorbed, we have abandoned. We have denounced me. We have denounced Almighty Yah. We have denounced forsaken Yah me. He says, I am the Machor. He is the source of life. And he breathed on Adum and he became Nefesh, his Nefesh. His breath caused him to come alive. He became a living being, a living Nefesh. Yah says, you have forsaken me. Just like our dawn would he forsook your death. And so when we forsake Yah, we don't have the Esha, the happiness. We don't have the blessing of his prosperity. We don't grow exponentially. We don't look as though we were prosperous. I don't care if I don't have one dime. I don't care how broke I am. And I go out there 90% of the times broke. Remember our forefathers, my parenting or the obligation of my parent, parents, those that were parenting me. Wherever we went, they would say, fix yourself up and look nice. Look right. You go somewhere, be careful, don't, don't be greedy. They offer you something, say, no ma'am, no sir. That's what they taught us. And although you wanted a piece of that pound cake, you didn't open your mouth. We were disciplined. We were taught things the way to go. When we got old, although our parents were ignorant, I haven't departed from those things. I haven't departed away from those principles, precepts, they were based upon the principles of Torah and the ignorance they didn't know. I have not allowed them to depart from me. Yeah. Not one bit. Yeah. I still hold fast. Yah, what is this to us? Yah says he is the fountain of the living waters. And this Yah sure shall lead us. Giliana, Revelation 7, 17, said that he shall lead us to the living fountains, the ayin, that our mental and our spiritual ability to conceive here, it will be formed by the precepts and the lines and the writing of Torah. We have this concept of Almighty Yah from the, from the wickedness of the cesspool, of the darkness of the God that emanates from our bellies. And that's why we can do things to offer unto him. Uh, Yah says, uh, from this he will cause the dew to fall, that the corn and the wine, that we will offer up obl oblations unto him. Uh, we will offer all things. Uh, we offer our offerings unto the God, uh, unto this vile thing we call our bet him, uh, our bellies where wickedness uh, is conceived, uh, where wickedness is practiced, uh, where wickedness uh, and what forsaking Yah comes from. We think we're smart. I don't want to be smart. I don't want to be the smartest man. I don't want to be the wisest man. I don't want to be that. I want to be real because if I'm real with Yah, then I will submit unto what he commands me. I won't question him. I will do it. I will assign, I will fashion. That's what do is, to fashion yourself according to those precepts and concepts. And we must fashion ourselves. We must do the right thing. You that know it's right to do it and you don't do it, it's the wickedness, it's sin. I don't want to sleep in slumber. I don't want to see what I can get by with. I don't want to be lazy. I've never been lazy. I love to work, I love to move my feet. I love, I don't want to be lazy. You can tell a lazy man or a lazy woman. You can, Yisrael. Yeah. No, you don't have to look at me. Look at you. You can tell whether you're lazy. All right? Can I give us a description of this fountain and what some of the elements of it? Yeah. Well, you don't have this book, most of you, but 
write it down and buy the book in the book of Shirak. Shirak. This is the true fountain here. The book of Shirak. Chapter 1. Shirak. 1 and verse 5. I love this. It says the word. The Dava. I want you all to hear this. The word. The Daba, the Dabari. The Daba of Yah is his promises. When you see the word, word, you see in Daba, a word Dabari, which entails the promises of Yah unto Yisraya, unto Avraham, Yitzchok, and Yaakob. Sharak. Chapter 1, verse 5. He says the word, the Torah. The word of Yah is, is, I like that son, is. It is uh, the fountain. Uh, it is the Mayam. That is the Maya. It is a fountain. It is the source of satisfaction in life. He says the word of Yah is the fountain of wisdom, of chukmah, of wisdom. Precept must be upon precept. We cannot be refreshed unless there's a wise uh, counselor among us. Uh, he says the Daba, the Dabarim, the word of Yah is the fountain. See the word of Yah. Listen now. It says in Revelation that he's going to lead us to the fountains of water. Now he's telling us here the word of Yah is the fountain that is singular, isn't it? It is the fountain. Uh, it is the source. Yah is uh, the fountain. Hallelujah. He says that the word of Yah is the fountain. What comes out of a fountain? Mayim water, doesn't it? It is the fountain whereby the wisdom of Yah comes forth. So when you press the knob of the nazola out of that faucet, that fountain, the fountain of the deep, comes water. Comes water. Yah is the fountain, Yisra'ya. You understand? Hallelujah. He is the fountain. Just like I read in Yeremiah, we have forsaken Yah, me, the fountain of the living water. There was no else on that. It was singular. He says in Jirak 1.5, the word of Yah is the fountain. The Maya. The Mayam, not Mayim, but the Mayam. Hallelujah. It is this fountain of wisdom. Listen this. And her ways, and the ways of wisdom, the precept of wisdom, and her ways are the everlasting mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. See, that's what wisdom teaches us. It teaches us that the everlasting or the way to eternal life uh, is according to the mitzvah, the commands uh, of Almighty Yahweh. That's how it comes, Yisrael. It's not going to come any other way. There are not many wise men among Yisrael. Not many. Not at all. Period. And that's a fact. Of course, I know there are not many that love me or care for me. I understand that. I, I don't lose any sleep at all. I get some of the nuttiest letters, and I respond the same way they respond. I answer fool or a simpleton according to their folly. Many times I would say to people, it would be nice to greet. I know how to greet. We should greet one another. Shalom. Crude in their approach. I discovered your site, although I disagree with some of the things, my reply, you don't have to agree with one damn thing. How do you determine the more a damn? There are others that determine it this way. Well, how would you know if you're looking to find out how it's done? I said, I do it the Torah way. From one moon to the other, okay? Now this individual will probably write something silly or smart. I don't respond again. I don't waste my time this is a stupid generation that thinks it knows everything. Every man is wiser. He wants to be wiser than the next one. That's his, that's his weakness. He thinks that he is strong, but that's his weakness. 
See, a wise man, he always hears. He receives any kind of correction and he becomes wise and strong. Ah. You cannot go, you, you cannot, can I use this as an analogy? I will. You cannot come or go in the weight room and show me things that, that are going to make me stronger. You can't do that because I've done it too many years. Now I can show you and I can teach you, but you can't do that. And this generation is one that thinks that it knows everything. And so it wants to promulgate oneself as though that I know like you. You don't know like I know. Because if you did, I would see it in you. A man's gift will make room for him. He doesn't have to say anything. It will be personified. He is our fountain. We're not going to be refreshed yesterday. You're not going to find it any other place unless you go to the precepts. The precepts upon precepts, the line, you're not going to find it any other place. That's the only way we're going to be in the fush. We're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be refreshed, Yisraya. And that's why our countenance looked dejected and rejected. That's why we look silly and like we look dumb. And that's just a fact. We are the salt. And when we lose the flavor of the salt, then we're tough for nothing. We are to be cast out and trotted on the foot. And that's why the world trots us under. No, you don't trot me under. No sun, no ray, no way. None whatsoever. I don't let you trot me under. No sun. None at all. You're not going to do that with me. Because I have the flavor of this testimony in my bosom. We are the salt of the earth. The salt loses its fragrance what do you want it for it is of no purpose to be thrown out and to show you how unvaluable it is uh, you should tread on it it is of no value and if we are the salt we are the light we are city that sit upon a hill you're not a city unless you're the salt and if you have no flavor in you, you're not a city that sit upon a hill, uh, that I'm my order, or the light uh, of our wisdom and our riches. Uh. And so when we go into the midst of this dark world of Gentiles and going, uh, our light shall shine. The power of that testimony shall shine. And they just look and say, wow, look at him. That's right. Look at him. Are you boastful? Oh, I make my boast in your sure. I know who I am. I will. You can condescend to this world. No, his truth in me makes a statement. The ruach in me makes a statement. His testimony in me is a statement. That's why you need to get control of you. You need to get control of you. How about that? the weak generation. It's despicable to me. I despise it. I despise it. I love the combination of the few Achim of Yisra'ya. I love the beauty of the Chochim, the daughters when they're beautiful. I despise it when they're not. I hate the presence. I don't even want them close to me. I don't even want you near me. That's the way I am. I hate it. I despise it. It's a stench. That is funky. I don't like it. I despise the hypocrisy, those that pretend they're real and got something genuine and they don't have a damn thing. I hate it. He's almost looking at a pair of alligator shoes and they have plastic and print. You just know the difference between the print and the real deal just they're not compared there's a difference between the print of gator and a real pair of alligator shoes I don't, I don't care if it's alligator I don't care if it's ostrich well you, you got unclean things on your fortress oh stop it what was the tabernacle or the house in the wilderness made of I'm quite sure there was no beaver hair nothing like that was it okay this is a stupid generation they're right but they don't know who they're dealing with. 
You got them lawyers in there. Oh, you silly boy. You're immature. You're a little boy. You play with things you have no knowledge of. You play with fire burn. You play with the Torah of Yah. You play with this. Oosh. It burns. Getting back to this truth. Shirak says that this word of Yah, it is the fountain, the, the mayham, the source of satisfaction, of wisdom. Her ways are everlasting commandments. Well, I, I know the Shirak says that, but that has no indication that, as to what written, written in the book that's, that I, as a person that do not have the resources uh, to see that, or the book of Shirak, you got enough money to buy the cookies and boba gum from Walmart. You don't have eight, twelve dollars and that's a fact. Yeah. Hallelujah. While to satisfy you, uh, I got something for you. It's found in Mishli. This is the Mashal. This is the wisdom of Yah. Proverbs chapter 13. How about this? Proverbs chapter 13. Uh, you're without any excuse. Proverbs 13 and verse 14. Can I read it? I shall. It says the Torah, the Torah of the wise or the hacham, those that have learned the precepts of Yah, the lines of Yah, those that, uh, uh, the Torah of the wise. See, there's a Torah. His word uh, is the fountain. It is the word of Yah, the Dabar, that is the fountain uh, of the living water, of the water of wisdom. Well, what is the Torah is what? Is that the Torah, the word of Yah? Yeah. Sure is the Dabarim. The Torah. The Torah to the wise. The Torah of the wise. The Torah of precepts and concepts and line and ordinance of Yah. To the wise man, to one that is skillful in the knowledge of Yah, to one that has the knowledge of the concepts of Yah is a fountain. You understand? It is the mahor. It is the fountain of life. For what? To depart from the snares of death. To depart from folly and foolishness. We should not give ourselves over unto much. And especially folly. Because when you're given the folly, you're going to die before your time. And that's just a fact. So a wise man of the precepts, the concepts, the Torah of Yah, one that is hucham, he is skillful in the knowledge of Yah, he is skillful in the Torah of Yah, he knows the operations of the Torah of Yah, he knows how to move away from the snares of death. Because the Torah is his delight. That's his refreshing. That's his nafash. That's what generates the substance of life in his bosom, Yisraya, and causes a man to depart from the wickedness. He departs from the snares of death. That's what a wise man does. Those that are hukha, hukha. Those that have labored to understand the precept, they have listen to the simplicity of the messages and draw from those things that misses the ears of most. They study the details of one's speech's words. They study the proposition that the messenger offers unto us to buy this truth and sell it not. Hallelujah. There is only one fountain. And that fountain is the living waters. And we must drink from the well of Yaakob. For in that well we are people. You shall not be called Yaakob. You shall be called Yisra'ya. For you are my nation. You shall prevail. And we prevail. I can't denounce that for no one. I don't care how weak I get. And I am a weak man. So I declare that I am strong. By the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. I have no earthly substance, but yet I am rich. Hallelujah. He woke me up this morning. I'm in his garret this morning. I'm satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and I shall get a dava from Yah. We need a word from Yahweh. A word from Yahweh. Just one word, fountain. That's it. Fountain of Yaakov, the living water, to cause us to move all of our doubts and cause the Shemesh to shine and the do now and a little rain. Ah, he gives us peace of mind. We need a word from Yah. A special word. He's given us a word today. Hallelujah. I want to give you, Yisrael, an assurance of this truth. As one speaks by the name of Hanach, we express Enoch, the Nombi, the prophet of Yah. He gives us a scenario and a detailed event or the events that shall transpire in our time. As he saw from the beginning, he could teach us what shall be the end in the book of Hanak. I want to read this somewhat expeditiously, quick. Hanak 48 and verse 1. I want to read 10 verses quickly, if I can, and try to express the elements as the nuances of each of his words. If I had time, I could do it. It says in the book of Hanak, Enoch 48.1, he says, through all of the great visions, uh, the precepts and concepts that Yah reveal, uh, he said, furthermore, there is a place... Uh, he said, and in that place, the first thing I saw was the fountain of Sadiq. I saw the fountain, the Ma'or. He said, I saw the fountain of Sadiq. All of us should have a copy of Hanak. I saw the fountain of Sadiq. And he said, the characteristic of it. Uh, which does not become depletes. It is never kala. It is never depleted. In essence, it is never exhausted. You can't use it up. You can't deplete the substance of the fountain of Sadiq. For it is the Sadiq of Yah, his righteousness uh, is an everlasting righteousness uh, and his Torah is the truth. His law is the truth. He says, which does not become deplete. He said, and is surrounded completely uh, by numerous fountains uh, of wisdom. When you use that expression, Rababa, it means beyond the numeric expression for our little simple minds to understand. He did not talk about one fountain, but numerous fountains of wisdom. Numerous. We're talking about the fountain. And see, so when one drinks, when one understands the precept of that fountain of wisdom concerning me, myself, and I. And you're going to see the Maya. You're going to see the satisfaction of Yah in that one. And they're satisfied. And they shall be satisfied. And then he used the word coal in the next verse. All that thirst. That thirst for Sadiq. That saw me, saw me. That have this thirst. That cannot be quenched but from that fountain. There are times I'm in the garden and it's hot. I don't like cold water. I like water that is somewhat just a degree or two above the temperature. I don't like cold water. I like water that is not hot. 
not warm, but in between. And so when I asked my Rafa to bring me water, she got more ice than water. I don't like it. Put me a little bit of ice in there. Just a little bit. Knock the warmth. Ah, that's all I want. I set it in the sun. Don't you understand, Yisraya, that is one of the best drinks of water you can drink. You get your glass jar, put your water in the sun and drink it. Our systems have become so polluted, we don't even like water. We don't even want water. We want Kool-Aid. We want trash like that, that we infuse. In our DNA, that we have a distaste for water. You're getting all the vitamins you need. Just sit it out there. It was a big thing at one time. Sun made tea, wasn't it? Just set the water out there and bring it in and let it get room temperature. We don't like water. We drink that much in a day. And I love water. And I drink it too. I love it. Well, the doctors say you can't drink water. Man, that doctor's a fool because your kidneys and your liver, you need to. If our body's retaining, there's something wrong with our body. Then we need to change other things. We need to all make a radical change of our eating. I just, I love myself too much to worry about eating a steak or a hamburger. Uh, some fat fried bacon. I just love me too much for that. Because if I eat it today, I don't know what it tastes like. The next hour. I love me too much for that. I love my health. I love my body. I love even as unattractive as it is to me. I still love it. He says to us, all the thirsty ones drink of the water. And they become filled with wisdom. Are we drinking of this water? Ah. Are we drinking from the numerous fountains uh, of wisdom? He did not say some now. See, we're not thirsty. Yeah. All that thirst, uh, he says, uh, all the thirsty ones, uh, all the thirsty ones uh, of the water. He says, all the thirsty ones drink of the water and become filled with wisdom. Then their dwelling place becomes, uh, it becomes Kodash, where they live, their minds, their thoughts. See, they, they become Kodash, they become righteous or Sadiq. And it says, and the elect ones. He talks about this time that we're in. At that hour, the Son of Man was given a name, Yoshua. As I read last night, who has ascended into the Shemayama? If you have, can you tell me his name? That's what uh, Shalomo says. Well, tell me his son's name. That's what he said. The precept is validated. He says that son of man was given a name in the presence of Omar Yahweh of Sava and before time. Even before the creation of the sun and moon. So people will say, you see her? He was there. Yeshua has always been with the Abba. As the Abba is, he is. He is the word, he is the Dabarim, he is the promises of your made flesh. He did not have a physical body or the physicality of what we call Yeshua. The word of God has always been the, the salvation of any nation or a people, especially his nation. Don't even write me and try it. I wouldn't waste my time. I hate ignorant people that think they're smart. I hate the ignorance of this generation. Don't waste my time with that. I don't even respond to them. I may say, thank you. Well, see, I told you so. You didn't know. Thank you. Not all you can say is thank you. Thank you. You don't know no nurse, but thank you. Thank you. Glad I'm not like you, fool. Yeah, I do. You've got to be wiser than this silly world. I'm much wiser than this world. Wiser than Mr. Obama. Sure I would. I'd meet Mr. Obama today. He said, I kind of like you, Keras. I know you do. 
You can sell yourself short all day, all right. Listen. He says in verse 3, And the hour that the Son of Man was given a name, and at that hour, in the presence of Almighty Yahweh of Sava, and before the time, even before the creation of the sun and the moon, before the creation of the stars, he was given a name in the presence of Almighty Yahweh of Sava, of hosts. He was given a name. Uh, yeah. And then it tells us in the next word, he shall. Uh, he did not say he is now. He will become. See, he will become. He was not, he will become a Michel, a staff. He will become our staff. He will be the one that calls the word Michel. It is something Michel. It, we see the word Kel in the K-A-L-E. And that, Kel is tough, isn't it? I love Kel. He will become that zira that caused the root, or he is the root of the germination of the offspring. He is talking about one. This one is Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, he shall become the staff for the Sadiq ones uh, in order that they may hear this, uh, lean on him. That they may lean on Yah. That they may trust Yah and not fall. If we lean on Yah, we will not fall uh, that's what he is, Yisra'ya. He is the Machel. He is the one that caused that seed to germinate and produce. I will trust him. Yahweh, I will trust Botak. In Yah, I will trust in Yahweh. Till I die, oh, I. He is the one, the staff, that calls us to lean on Yah, and we will not fall. He is the ma'or, he is the light to the Gentiles. Now, why is he the light to the Gentiles? Because Yisra'ya has every kind of attribute that all Gentiles have. Our women dress like Gentile women. Our men dress effeminate and faggish like the Gentile men. Our women have the Gentile mind. Our sons are brought up in a Gentile nurturing goim. Heathens that do not know Yah, that's how we are raised. And so he shall, Yahshua, he shall be the light unto the Gentiles, the nations where Yisrael is spirit. And he will become the tidva of those that are sick in their levine. We're sick in our hearts. We're a sick nation. We're very sick. Our hearts are sick. We don't trust Yah. I know we believe we trust him. But our hearts are sick. Our minds are sick. Our minds and hearts are keli. It is dressed with a disease. We don't know how to trust Yah. We trust in lies. We trust in folly. But we don't trust Yah. We don't botak. Botak says, I have great confidence. I will not fall because I lean on him. I don't care how things look, I still lean on him. I trust Yah. And I shall not not fall. I will not fall like the wicked. The wicked set a trap for the righteous, but the wicked come and fall instead of the righteous. You understand? Yeah. And even your flesh, as it sets the trap, it shall not fall. We're sick in our hearts. All those who dwell upon the earth, all of them, they're going to fall and shakha before him. They're going to fall. Listen now. They're going to worship before Yahshua HaMashiach. It did not, it says, they're going to worship before him. Yah seeketh such that will worship him in Ruach and in Torah. He said they all are going to fall and worship before him. They shall magnify. They shall bless. And they shall sing. And sing and shear, make shiram, they shall sing the name of Yah of Sava. That's what it says. 
Yah is my king. No other one like Yah. Oh, I praise the name of Yah. Cause of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, halle. Hallelujah. 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 And they shall sing. They shall sing. The name of Almighty Yah. Why? For this purpose, verse 6. He became the chosen one. He has. Yoshua is the chosen one. And then this is a beautiful statement here. It says he was kahatz. He was concealed. He was hidden. And he was cut off before his time. He was kahat. He was cut off in the presence of Omar Yah. And he was. He was cut off in the presence of Yah of Savah prior to the creation of the world and for eternity. Yah says, uh, you're going to be cut off in the season of that time, son. Uh, and Yah says, this is I now before he created anything. Uh, he knew that what should come. And if he knew what should come, doesn't he know what is uh, and what shall be and what was before Yisrael? We just must trust him. Everything we trust, we have read, heard, or saw. Everything we trust, we have read, heard, or saw. Everything about life, you read it, you hear it, or you see it, and you trust that. You are not the creator of one damn thing. And you trust that. Oh, I believe it works. How do you know? Verse 7, he will, and he has. I love this, Yeshua, and he has, only him, he has Galah, he has revealed Yisrael, he has uncovered, he has removed the darkness of our eyes, he has caused our eyes to be anointed with Isaac, he has Galah. He has revealed the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh of Sava. He is the righteousness to, he revealed that to who? To the righteous and to the Kodash one. That's who he reveals the wisdom to. That's where the fountain or the well of Yah of Yahakob. He reveals it unto those that are Kodash and those that are righteous. For he has preserved the portion of the righteous. Preserved a portion because they have hated, we must sonay, and they have despised this world. We don't despise this world of oppression. We don't despise it, but those that despise this world of oppression together with all of its ways of life and its habits in the name of Almighty Yahweh of Sabah, we must hate it all. We must hate the ways of this world. We must hate our own ways. We must despise it. Not some of our habits, but all of our habits. And all of our ways. All of our habits. And that's why we're not drinking from this fountain. That's why we're not drinking from the well that Yaakov dug for us. Although he dug a well of darkness and sin, he was the supplanter. And yet because he was elected by Yah, he was the one that prevailed. Even against Esau in the opposition of darkness. We must hate this world and all of its oppression, all of its ways, all of its habits. We must even hate ourselves and pick up this truth and follow Yahshua, Hamashiach, hallelujah. We must do that, and that's a fact, hallelujah. That hate all this world of oppression together with all of its ways of life and its habits in the name of Almighty Yah of our host. And because, and because, and because, and because... They will be saved in his name. And it's his tough pleasure that they may have life. Listen, Yisrael, in those days, the kings of the earth and the mighty land owners shall be humiliated on the account of the deeds of their hands. Therefore, on the day of their amal, their miseries, their turmoil, and their great weariness, they will not be able to save themselves. You're not going to deliver yourself. 
He said they will not be able to save themselves. I shall deliver them into the hands of my elect ones. Like grass in the fire. And like lead in the water. So they shall burn before the face of the Kodesh ones. And sink before their eyes. And no place will be found for them. This is the vital catalyst of it all. Because he is the fountain of the living water. In verse 10. You garner nothing today. Hear this. Hear this. On the day of their weariness. There shall be an obstacle on the earth. And they shall fall on their faces. And they shall not rise up again. They're not going to be elevated. The obstacle will be the kingdom of darkness. Or shatan. His minions to deceive the masses of the congregations. Hear this. Nor any one, none of them, be found who will take them with his hands and raise them up again. They're not going to be raised up. But this is our comfort in the next sentence here. For they have denied Yahweh of hosts and his Mashiach. Bless be the name of Yahweh of Seva forever. They have they have Azab. They have despised his name, forsaken the two evils among his people. We have forsaken the fountain of the well of Yaakov. And we're drinking from cisterns. So what do we do? Can I tell you what the prophet said? I know what Yakahan says in Revelation. And he shall lead them to the fountains. But look what Zechariah says. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. I have one word, one verse here. Hallelujah. This is your tegva. This is your promise. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. He says, was not Hanak talking about in that day or the day? That's how I began, Yisrael. Is he not talking about that day? It says in Zechariah, he says, this is not what Yakahan talking about in that day? Talking about Pacific. But this is what Zechariah says. He said, in that day, there shall be a machor, there shall be a fountain. There shall be the source of life, the source of cleansing, the source of purification. That's what the well of Yaakov, the spring, the fountain represented. He says, and in that day, there shall be a fountain open there shall be a machor open to who? Nobody but David be at the house of David. And to the inhabitants of who? Of Jerusalem for sins and for the uncleanliness or the nidah of the people. That's what this fountain is for. For the house of David. That is what this shebet, this uh, branch, uh, you're sure that's what it's for. For the cleansing. And when one has bathed oneself from the fountains of waters, uh, then one feels refreshed. There's enough force, Yisrael. We must constantly refresh ourselves in the living Torah. We're drawn from a dead writing or rights uh, that is not prospering us in anything. Uh, we're not prospering in our health, our wisdom, uh, in our physical being. We look a mess. Uh, we shouldn't look like that. Our bodies are not meant to look like that. Yeah. Our inward part, that's just it. Yeah. We can pretend all we want to. Yeah. You can pretend to eat the salad, but you're eating something else. Yeah. And the thing of it is, you must be confronted. Yeah. And we don't want to confront ourselves. Yeah. That's a fact. You'll get quiet all you want to. You too. Yeah. One of the first things that Evander Hartsfield taught me, he looks at me. He says to me, brother, <laughs> open rebuke is better than secret law. Well, I had to find out where that was. And he would rebuke me. I'm so glad he did. He taught me not to fight. One thing he taught me, not to fight. 
When he would rebuke me, it would make me love him so much because I knew he cared for me. You rebuke a fool today, you're going to get a block. Fools will hate you. You rebuke an old man, he looks nutty as a fruitcake. You can see it all in his eyes, his countenance, his expression. Well, what about the other ones? I'm not dealing with them, I'm dealing with you. When Yah receives the son, he, he corrects him. I want to finish this all right. I have a few more. Yeah, I'll finish it. And this fountain is only open unto the house of David. David. And if you're not a David, I don't care what you look like, you're not going to be cleansed. You're not going to be washed. And that is a promise. We don't understand the greatness of the God, the magnitude, the multitude of Almighty Yah. There was one that was the scribe of or the secretary of Yeremiah. And his writings are known to be a part of the written book. I don't like the other word. I wouldn't even use it. But he writes so indelibly in the second writings of Baruch. He tells us the greatness of Yah. Write it down, you that are in your homes. Baruch chapter 54. Second Baruch. If we could just understand the words that we read and let them become alive in our heart. This is what Baruch says. How did he develop it? Because he saw the great prophecy of Yeremiah, the words that were spoken. The words that he penned according to the diction and the dictate of Yeremiah. When he gives Yisra'ya inspiration, he asks the question, For who is able to imitate the miracles of Almighty Yahweh? This lie of Christian in Jesus' name, that's a damn lie. It is demonically induced. Uh, these are not the more faith of Yah. These are not miracles. No more than a magician can trick. They're not doing one thing in the, in the name of a lie. So who can imitate the miracles of Yah? Oh, Yah. Or who understand your deep thoughts of life? Uh, you think every man understand the deep thoughts of Yah, of life? Uh? That's why you don't have very many serious men today. Not many men understand the deep thoughts of Yah. He said, for with your Musa, your counsel. Who wants the counsel of Yah? The counsel of Yah is Musa. It's his discipline, his correction, his rebuke. No man wants that. Uh. He says, for with your counsel, you reign over the creation, the bara. He created something from nothing. He took nothing, we perceive it as nothing, and made it. He bara, he formed it uh, out of his mind. Not out some kind of evolution. Uh, You reign over all creation with your right hand, Bara. And he says, This Baruch, you have established the whole fountain, the Machor, you have established the source of life and the expression of sufficient and more than enough. You have established the whole fountain. Not of life, but of light with yourself. Your sure is and was the light of the world. And because we love the whole shed darkness, the light of his wisdom, his Torah, that fountain was not even opened. We cannot even drink from that fountain. He says that you are the whole fountain of light with yourself. I read that in Haddock. Before he was, he had a name. And you have prepared under your throne the treasures of wisdom. That's where the wisdom flow from the throne of Yah, from his kese. Listen. And those, I want you to hear this, Mr. Christian. You that want to walk in the doctrine that was taught by your mama, and she was a wicked thing, you can call her what you want to. You to hold fast to your daddy and your mama and your brothers and sisters and your kinsmen. But this is what Baruch says. Second Baruch 54, 14. And those 
who do not love, who do not ahab, who do not ahava. We say we love but those that do not love Torah are justly perishing. They're dying because we don't love Torah. We are justly, we are justified, yes, justified by causing uh, us to perish. And those who do not love your Torah, and those who do not love your Torah, and those who do not love your Torah are justly perishing. And the torment of judgment will fall upon those who have not subjugate themselves unto your power. What is this power? His Torah. That is the power of your His Torah. Did not your shoe come in the power of Torah? What a fountain he was. He is the fountain of Yah. He is the word of Yah. He is the fountain of wisdom. He is where wisdom and understanding flows from. And yet because we have forsaken the fountain of the living water, we have forsaken, we have azab, we have abandoned, we have disallowed it, we don't even want to drink from it. We say this to us all, you that are listening. I would ask any of you all, when you go to jobs, if you work a job, you think you can nod off and fall asleep in Yah's house? You think you can do that on a job? You think you were police officers out there riding? You think you fall off and nod out? You think you go and just get your nap? That's the wickedness in us when we do that. You need to train your wicked, slothful flesh that you stop doing that. When you become that druggy, you can't hear what Yah says. We must be attentive and we must hear Him. That your body is drugged, your mind is drugged, you can't stay awake. You got plenty of time to rest on the Shabbat. Go to bed if you have to make yourself lay down. I've never done that that way. Never. I don't care who's talking what they're saying. I don't care how the conversation for the teaching goes. I always listen as they're away. There's something sick in you when you do that. Stay awake in Yah's house. You can't do it on a job. You don't walk around in Walmart and you're asleep and you can walk for three hours and your foots, not feet, your foots is a hurting. And you don't go to sleep at home. You can sit around and laugh for three or four hours and you don't get sleepy. Now I want you here to stop that. Don't go to sleep out there. Hallelujah. And you hardly don't want to go to sleep watching that movie. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. So those that do not love his Torah, they're justly perishing. Because they will not subjugate themselves, be subject unto his power. Now the prophet Jeremiah gives us a great warning. Jeremiah 17, 13. Listen to him. Jeremiah 17, 13. He calls Oya. He talks about the Tikva of Yisra'ya. Again, he talks about all those that have azab forsaken you. Was that not one of the first commentaries I read? We have committed two evils. We have forsaken the fountain. Can I read it again? All right, let me read that again. Hallelujah. It says in Yeremiah 2.13, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, first of all, me, the fountain of the living water, and then they have hewed or made them cisterns, uh, broken cisterns that hold no water. Our hearts don't even hold the living water. Our minds don't hold the living water. Your shoe is that living water. We don't retain what we hear, but we retain folly, don't we? We don't retain the healing powers uh, or the properties of his power. There's no one that can imitate Yah. There is no one that can perform the miracles or, or imitate the miracles of Yah. No one. Not man. Not man. Be son, no God. There's none like him, all right? And so Jeremiah, as he speaks to this people, we are stubborn. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 13. Uh, o Yah, the Tigva of Yisrael, all that have forsaken you, they shall be bush. 
They're going to be ashamed. They're going to be ashamed. Why? And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Why? Because they have forsaken Yah. He is the fountain of the living water. That well that Yaakov dealt, you got to go deep into the precepts and concepts of Yah to understand this flow of this water. You get surface water, it's polluted, isn't it? You got to go down to the deep wells. And the deeper you go, the more pristine the water is. It has taken the courses. Uh, and the tributaries uh, and the underwater rivers, they have coursed through the granite, the rocks. Uh, and it's pure. The water is probably so pure, if you drink it, your teeth will all fall out. That's what the pure waters will do. I remember when they had uh, the Olympics Winter Games uh, there in Utah that the water was so pure. And the pure as they could get it because the pure of the water, when they made the ice, uh, then the skates would glide uh, and the speed uh, and the performance, it's, it, there was no resistance. And the commentator said, this water is so pure, if you drink it, you got feelings, uh, it will literally pour the feelings uh, out of your mouth. You can't even consume this. Uh, we can't even drink this living water. Why? Because when we drink it, it's going to pull out all of that damn trash out of us. Uh, that's why we don't want to drink it. Uh, that's why we forsake the living well. And we go to a well of death. Uh, we don't want to go to Jacob's well. Uh, and to get down deep in the earth. Uh, that's why they protected that well. Uh, they had to go down and drink from that well. And draw, we got to draw deep. Yeah. He said, because they have forsaken you are the fountain of the living waters. We have forsaken you. We don't want the living water. We don't want that. Because this pure water is going to draw it out. It's going to make us confess our faults one to another. And be honest. You drink from this, you're going to find yourself being healed. Your mind getting right, your heart getting right. Your spirit getting right. This damnable generation doesn't love Yah. There's no rejoicing in his Hamashiach. Hallelujah. We'll go back to Baruch. The second Baruch. Hear this. As the great vision that you are granted unto him to see and perceive. To give him, to give us as a nation affirmation to affirm all things. And in that affirmation to affirm all things, it gives us a great assurance. That we become stable and unmovable. In Shechem Baruch, chapter 57, verse 1, he said, of all the things I saw, he said, after those things, he said, I saw this bright or this oil water, this bright water. He said, that is, you hear that? The fountain of Abraham. I saw this crystal flow of the living water. The Dabarim was given unto Abraham, his seed after him. All the promises of Yah are given unto his house. And they're scattered, they walk like Gentiles, they look like Gentiles. Their skin pigmentation comes in from one extreme to the other. You're not going to go here or there and find them. Huh? They're scattered throughout the breadth of the earth. And that's a fact. He said, the fountain, the fountain of Abraham in his generation, and the coming of his son, huh? Yitzhak, and of his son, Jacob. And look now. And of those who are like them, we must be like them. We must be like them. And to those not, are not like them, but those that are like them. For at, with Abraham, listen. He says, for at that time, the unwritten Torah was in force among them. The unwritten Torah, they knew. The unwritten Torah was in force among them, uh, and the words of the Mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, were accomplished at that time. And in this time, it cannot be accomplished, uh, and we have a living truth. Uh, and yet they had an unwritten law. We have a written law where, as Azak King Yerabia pointed out, uh, written in our bosom, uh, in our minds, in our inward parts, uh, 
And the belief in the coming judgment was brought about. And the hope of the world, which will be renewed, was built at that time. And the promise of life that will come later was planted. Hear this. Those are the bright waters which you have seen. When one drinks from the brightness, it was a beautiful thing as a young lad. We could go to the creeks and drink the water, and the wa that's where our drinking water came from. I would be very amiss to drink the water from the creeks today. You may find dead hogs floating and every kind of parasite. I will be, it may look clear. Yet in those days, we could see every kind of living life. As a kid, we would go. And the beauty of the screen, this is the vision of the living waters. And we need this living, the bright waters. Who wants to bathe in dirty water? We want to bathe in the more crystal clear it is, the more cleaner you think you are, isn't it? Hallelujah. Can I give us some words of affirmation? I will. Hallelujah. I want to share this with us. In the book of Ezra, the third book of Ezra, this is important. Hallelujah. And we think that, I, I know I reminisce at times and I would say thing that, things that Evangelist Hartfield taught me, but one of the first things he taught me, he says, Brother, I want to tell you something. He says, all Yisrael shall be saved. I, I didn't understand that. I had no knowledge of that. I, I couldn't understand that. But by and by, as I have grown in the understanding of the precepts, I understand. And this is one of the first things that Ezra sets in order right here. In 3rd Ezra 2.16. Hallelujah. This is the great assurance to call Yisrael, whether we're dead, and those that died before us that were ignorant. Listen to this. Yah says, and those that are dead, Muth Mavith, they have died. He says, will I raise up again from the place? They're getting up. Dead in your shoes shall ride first, and we that are alive and remain, as Shaul speaks. He says, and I will bring them out of their graves. Why? Listen to what it says. Y'all says, because I, because I, because I, because I, not because of them, but because I have recognized my name in them. See, when people ask me these damnable, silly questions, y'all know his people. See, Evangelist Hartsfield didn't know that, although he said that to me. Y'all says, because I know you haven't. Y'all says, because I have recognized my name in them. Because I, they did not, because I have recognized my name in them. I put it there for the foundations of the earth. Because I, he did not say because they have. He said because I, because I have recognized my name in them. Because I have recognized my name in them. So those 200 years ago, y'all said, but I recognize my name in them. Those that were brought on the harsh of slavery and did not have no learning skills and, was, and were not taught the name because I have recognized. I'm so glad that he knows everything. I'm so glad that I'm ignorant. I don't want to be smart. I mean that. I don't want to be able to challenge every man at everything. They say. I don't want to. I don't want to be like I despise that in men. I hate it. There are people that say things to me as I tell you what. Although they're wrong, you understand. And I know they don't know. As I tell you, you know your stuff, don't you, man? Hear you. I hear you talking more. You know, say that again. Ah, uh, well, that's all right. And then once you do that, they get real wild then. I don't want to be that way. 
I don't want to know everything. There's often, when we have worked together building all these buildings, I know I know as much and more than him when it comes to building. And that's a fact. I'm not a builder of building. I say, well, how do you want to do this? Even though he was a young man, I, I tell you what, you start here. Which way? Where, where we want to start first? It makes no difference where we start because he said, well, let's start over here. I said, okay. You get on that corner. I got this one. All right. We're building that, the footing up there, Zakin Shimri's house. Zakin, how you want to do this, man? Well, I said, boy, that hill, boy, that's steep there. I don't, I don't want to start there, man. Let's go back here. Okay, let's, let's go here. Let's work this together. Is that, I don't ever want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to know everything. I don't want to be smart. I don't want to know everything about the Torah. I want to know what it takes to maintain me. Yeah? And that I can teach the concepts and the precepts of Yah that, that will be revelation. I'm not offended because a man is smarter than me. I'm not jealous because a man is more knowledgeable than me. I'm not that stupid. I know what you know. You don't know what I know because you're not like me. You can't talk like me. I don't care what you say. You can say what you want. No, you can't talk like me. You can't bring it on like me. Fuck, you cannot. You know what you say? I don't care what kind of commentaries you got. I have no commentaries. I got one thing. That's the Hebraic dictionary. That's it. I don't need no commentaries. No! See, I was in a cross between what to teach today and what to preach. Because that was a new message I want to preach on the renewing. And then I was sitting somewhere in the garden, I believe working. And then I just got up this morning at 7 and said, Okay, let me make sure the scriptures work and let me go find the stuff that I need. Hallelujah. You understand? So that's why when we have time to ponder a message, you should bring forth things that are of great excellence. I've been working hard this week. Most days I haven't finished up until six in the evening. You see, and I. You want some back exercise and you want to work on your torso. Come on up to garden one, I can show you. We get out there and we eat that sugar cane. I tell you, get up off your knees. Get up. Crawling on his belly like a snake. Get up off your knees. I don't care if it's wet. He get, I'm not getting on on my knees. And my knees going to hurt worse than my back. So I assume my position. That's it. I can get all the way down. I, okay, yo. I can roll. I can work either way. I get in a position here. I can pick all these beans here. I can pick them here. I can pick them here. I can pick them there. I get up. But we got a refined technique now. He can pick a book. You see, we are so stubborn, we don't want to teach us anything. I can't teach him. He will submit. He can pick a bucket of bean in less than 20 minutes. I said, now this is how you pick them, yo. We, put, we picked four bushels of beans yesterday. It took us less than an hour. It took us less than an hour. I know what time we started. No, no, you get right there. No, 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 no. Don't get it. No, no. Right here with me. I'll show the ark tomorrow. We're going to pick a little bean. We're going to work two hours. Or I know you all work. We got to get those beans up. They're too beautiful. Hallelujah. I'm always trying to make it easier for me and quicker. Closing with this, all right? Ezra chapter 2, verse 16. Third Ezra. I want to read that again. And those that be dead, that are dead, he says, I will come. I will raise up again from their place of Sheol. And I will bring them out of their graves, their Sheol, because, because, no other reason. Not the works you've done speaking for you. No other reason. Because I recognize my name in them. He recognized his name in them. I'm so glad. This is, this we need the precepts to be refreshed. 
There are folks out there listening to these little dead, phony boys today, and they have nothing. And they're listening to something like this. All of you sending an offering. Do we have anyone listening back there? Uh, send an offering today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Send a gift. Send some tithes. Let these liars tell you tithes are not away with. That's a lie. That should be an elementary thing. I shouldn't have to even teach on that over and over. And I'm not going to do it. He says, because I recognize my name in them. He tells us, fear not. Your mother, you mother of children. He said, don't worry, don't fear. For I have chosen you, says, yeah, I've chosen you. I've chosen your, your offspring. I've chosen you, man. Don't fear. What's going on to my baby? Don't worry about that because I recognize my name in them. Teach them. Train them in the way that they should go. When they're old, they shall not depart. Uh, he said, I recognize my name in them. Uh, I will send you, he says, mama, daddy. I will send you my aid. Uh, I will send you my help. Uh, he said, who? My servants, my mighty messengers, Yeshia, and yet me y'all y'all send the prophets uh, that's my cross in the novim uh, send the mighty men of y'all i will send you them according uh, to their counsel uh, i have set you apart and prepared you uh, i have prepared you 12 trees uh, each one for each tribe each of the blessings of y'all cope he said 12 trees laden with different kinds of fruits, uh, divers peri. Uh, he says that not only that, uh, for the 12 tribes, uh, in verse 19 and 12 fountains. 12 fountains. Jacob dug one. He said, I give you 12 fountains. Flowing with the milk and honey. And then he says, I give you seven mighty mountains. Seven great ruachim. Is that where the... Pure springs flow from state like California, Zachane Davis. They they depend on the snow in the mountains. That's where their water source is. Places like Denver, Colorado, places like that with mountains, mountainous terrain, they get their water from the mountains. He said, I give you seven mighty mountains. The Ruach of the fear of God, the Ruach of Kodesh, the Ruach of wisdom, the Ruach of understanding, the Ruach of Da'at. He said, I give you seven mighty mountains, uh, whereupon grows the beauties of lilies. Uh, Shalomo and all of his magnificent honor, he did not array as one of these little lilies, not one. I bring you the beauty of the wells and the fountains of wisdom and the fountains of life and the fountains of, of understanding. He said, by these, by these, Will I feel your children uh, with my shamach, with my joy that is arrogantly? Don't tell me you have the joy of Yah when you, you don't have an arrogant joy. When there is no expression, I don't mind you looking at me. Come on. Yeah. There's no arrogance in your joy. Go to hell with that lie. You can trick some of the folks. You can't trick all of us. You can lie and tell folks believe you. Uh, I don't believe you. I will. Can I say this to all of you that are listening to your daughters here? There's nothing I love more than a, a beautiful bath of tears I am. I'm not talking about someone trying to shake their eyes and show me they got big titties and think they're fine and they want to be seen by a man. That's not what I'm looking for. I love the beauty of the simplicity of a daughter. I love that. I love it. Ain't nothing more beautiful than that. Her walk is quiet. The women that talk before they even talk, I despise it. I hate it with a passion. I don't even want to be close to a woman like that. You find a silly lie woman, she is ignorant and she knows nothing. And that's a fact. Shut up. Your spirit talks more than anything. I love daughters like that. Ah. Uh, I don't even want to look at them. I just, all right. I want to be shamefaced. I don't ever like looking in a woman's eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For we commit to all this I've read today and taught us. There's the result and there are results. I close with this from the book of Yeshaya. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. Yeshaya. You talked about a people in this chapter talks about the sum 
when we truly fast, you don't fast or you deny yourself just to think that you're right and you've done something. He used the expression of the word sum. That's what the whole chapter is about. You have to read it. I want to pick out one verse in here, but of course it is implicit or implies that when we commit ourselves to Yah, to grow in His Torah, His truth, then this is the result or the results that shall come forth. So when one Sum, he was saying, you, you don't do this to be recognized. You do it in quietness uh, and you do it deliberately that nobody knows what you're doing. And when it's all done, when you finish, when you commit unto Yah, he said, this is the result. Yes, Shai 58, 8. Uh, he said, then shall your light, your ma'or, your light, it shall break forth as the morning. When the morning breaks forth, it brings about a, a, a refreshing and a, and a re invigoration in one, right? Uh, so when we obey Yah and we do what Yah commands, us, uh, it brings about that kind of ruach in us. Uh, he says, and your aruka, uh, your health, uh, the healing and restoration of uh, your health uh, shall shamach, it shall spring forth speedily. Uh, and your sadiq shall go before you, uh, and the splendor of Yah shall be your reward. When we drink yeah. from this fountain, yeah. we drink the living water when we drink of the well of Yahshua Hamashiach. This shall be our reward. We shall be healthy spiritually and mentally and physically. We shall be. We shall have a healthy inward part. Our attitude and our actions, our mindset is one that is healthy. Our concern for Yisra'ya. When we began to wax cold, we don't care about no one. We shorten our actions, our activities, and our ways. And we don't want to recognize how cold, and how indifferent, how wicked we are. We don't want to do that. We don't want to say I'm cold and I'm nasty. We want to give explanation and reason why. I will say this, damn this wicked generation. And you're going to be damned if you don't get right with Yah. How do we do it? Through the precepts and the concepts of Yah. Through the refreshing of Torah. That's how you get right. Let the light shine. Let your light shine. What light? You have no light we let the light of this testimony of Torah shine. How that men may see our tough work in us. They may see the excellence of the mitzvah in us. And then when they see that, they will honor Yah. That's what they will do. We got to get it right, Yisrael Yah. And then when that happens, the results that we're going to have the great health and the great beauty of Yah and Yahshua. And we're going to walk that way. And that's what Yah wants from us. We need the fountain. The fountain of Yaakul, the living water. We need to drink that. He shall recognize his name in his people. And those that you think are not right or did not go in the way of Yah, he said, I recognize my name in them. That's mine. That's why this ignorant generation don't know because they're trying to get answers uh, to satisfy their curiosity and their self-righteousness. That's why men must labor, my Zach, and they must labor to understand. Men don't need to be so diverse. Uh, among us, every ox should be able to teach, or if he just maintained one damn Pacific uh, and trying to be so general. Uh, you don't need to be broad in the senses of the knowledge of Yah. You just teach one thing, uh, just that one thing, uh, and somebody add to it, uh, somebody add to that and that. Uh, Someone says something, you want to go read something at Torah? I think you know everything. You want to, yeah, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is yes, man. And that's the truth. You know, in a, what they call a prestigious or great restaurant, they have a head chef, chef, don't they? They have what they call pastry chefs. All they do is pastries. That's all they do. They don't do anything else. You have what they call sushi. They just do sushi. That's all they do. That's all they do. You have those that do entree. You have those that do just nothing but vegetable. In a show enough powerful restaurant that say seats about 100 people. Most expensive restaurants don't seat that many people because it's very laborious to the chef. But those chefs work. Just say if you got a restaurant, Fifth Avenue, New York City, that seats 150 people. In that restaurant, in that restaurant alone, you're gonna have employed, I guarantee you, in that restaurant, 
at least 10, 12 chefs with all Pacifics. And that's not the understudies. You're going to have 30 or 40 people working there. That's just the truth. They serve 110 people, 150. Of course, the average meal is going to cost you $350 in New York, $500. So the average person with a party of four, they're going to spend, you know, $1,200, $1,500. Chef comes out, so how do you enjoy the entree? How is that? That's what you're going to have. So why is it that the world understands the preciseness? Corporations do not run with one man knowing everything. The CEO sits up, and you got everybody that operates in a different sphere. Today, everybody wants to know everything because they think they're smart, and they want to get together and challenge each other. If this arc is, uh, he has great wisdom, his study should be on one Pacific, uh, understanding the dynamics of wisdom of God. When he talked, then everybody could be quiet. Just, okay, let's listen to him. And when you talk to me and try to talk in a broad general sense, they don't know nothing. Oxygen just said, come on, break out of concordance and deal with every word that deals with that Pacific and search out the Torah on that. We're too damn dumb to do that. We try to read it in a general place. We read a few scriptures. We try to tie that in with the whole of this. No, everything I preach today dealt with one thing. It dealt with the maho, the ma'o, or the eye in the fountain of Yah. You can't make it work. You can't press a round peg uh, into a square peg. Uh, don't give me that if it's smaller. D don't even try that with me, all right? The word of Yah is equal, isn't it? So if you've got the a diameter of a peg equal with the diameter of a square, you can't press it in. We need the healing of Yah, Yisra, Yah. And that's always going to come by the Torah of Yah. We need to go to the fountain, quit drinking the way you were drinking. And it began with the precepts upon precepts and the line upon line. Be genuine, be honest. And once we get to that place, when we get to that kind of spirit, we will begin to see the exponential growth of your honest, the beauty that will come. So when we go places like, that's why Yahshua got a little child set up in the midst of them, saying, let you become like them. And so when you go places like they marvel at the little children, they will marvel at you like that too. They will marvel at you like that too. They will marvel at you as well of that way. The same thing. And that's the way it should be. We are a sugula, we are peculiar people. We ought to be admired, we ought to be looked upon. And that's a fact. May the riches of your rest upon you all. We greet you all. I know I didn't call us out today, but greetings to you all. In your sure's mighty name, we appreciate all you do. Do send an offering or gift to help us here. And all you that are listening, may Yas, great hand rest upon you, healing power, and Zakain. Tayonia and Davis, all of you that have joined us, our precious friend Yako there in Florida, and also our precious Akya Ako. He's such a tremendous man there in, in McKinney, Texas. All these years, he has been so beautiful with me, so faithful. He doesn't tell me, love me, he doesn't write me, he doesn't talk. Sometimes he may write and say, Ray Ako, look at that for me. And immediately when he tells me that, I look at it. Because he trusts me to do that. Yeah. Uh, Y'all Cove there in Texas, McKinney, we bless you, my friend. His kindness is, is just beyond expression. Yeah. And because he has blessed this labor, Y'all has blessed him much. Yeah. And he is blessed and enriched of Omar Yah. We greet you as well. Achot Mariana, may Yah strengthen you. Yeah. We encourage uh, David there in Indiana, may the strength of Yah rest upon you. Achot David, when you hear this, may. Yah's blessings are our frank. Your issue may strengthen you and your house and give you great resolve. And all of you, our friends, are our blessed to them. May Yah's great hand rest upon you. The healing of his strength rests upon your body in a mighty way. These are those and others, our precious Ochotz, uh, Lucretia. May he strengthen you and bless you richly, our precious Ochot, and all you do, our Ochot Kim. And all of you that have joined us today, may Yah enrich you. May this word be a rich blessing to you. And if it's not, I frankly quote, don't give a damn. How about that? So may enrich you all in your choose name. Come on, Azakain, he's going to dismiss us. If we drink from the fountain, Yahshua HaMashiach, as Reyach has expressed unto us this day, Israel, we should never thirst again. Hallelujah. Does that mean we, we drink? And then we do not drink anymore. No, that's not what it's, that's not what it's implying, Israel. Right, it's a continual purging and a drinking of the water that we know we cannot live without it. Hallelujah. We don't drink of the water, of the pollution of our flesh, of our own mind, of our corruption. 
we drink of this precious water, Yahshua HaMashiach. So we told y'all before that, let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Can never get enough water, Yisraya. Hallelujah. So let us drink of this fountain of Yahshua on this beautiful day Yahweh has given us. Abba Yahweh, we do tell you for your word, for your truth that you have given unto the house of Israel on this day. Again, we do tell you, Yahweh, for your mercy, for your truth, for your hava, for your long suffering, Abba Yahweh, that you have given unto the house of Israel. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, those that have come from near and far, those that are listening, by via of live stream, that you continue to give us the strength, Yahweh, that we need to endure all things, Abba Yahweh. And Yahweh, again, touch those that are sick in their bodies, those that are weak, those that are enduring circumstances, Abba Yahweh, that you would give them your Torah, Abba Yahweh, that it may heal them, even what you have given us on this beautiful day. And all things we do give you Torah, we do give you blessing, Abba Yahweh, in the precious name of Yahshua, HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh! Yahweh! Hallelujah!